Well, everybody agrees the body cam video is the key evidence in the murder trial of former UC police officer Ray Tenzing. But the video that shows the fatal shooting of Sam DuBose is subject to interpretation. Local 12's Deborah Dixon tells us about today's interpretation by the defense. Deb? Yeah, hi, Rob. The video expert who testified for the defense saw the video very differently from the prosecution's video expert. The prosecution's video expert says the body cam shows Ray Tenzing put his gun to Sam DeBose's head before the car moved and shot less than a second later. Today's defense video expert sees it differently. The body camera footage, like I said, it's a good piece of evidence, but it's not the only piece of evidence. Rotor has a crime scene reconstruction company and analyzed the video and the audio seconds before and after Sam DeBose was shot. He says it shows the car was moving or starting to move before the shot was fired. The video starts with Tenzing trying to get DeBose out of the car because he couldn't produce a license. The vehicle's now moving. That's a heavy rev of that engine. Acceleration, shot fired. And then he's hanging onto the car and falls off. Prosecution's video expert Grant Frederick said the sound of the revving engine was from a passing car, but video of that car shows the brake lights on. Here's the, the fatal flaw and what, what um, Mr. Fredericks did is he didn't really analyze the audio. Uh, and we know when you look at the presentation that I put together, at this particular point in time, the engine is clearly on and in gear. And we hear the engine revving. So if the car's not moving, it's about to move. The prosecution tried to say Rotor isn't a real video analyst. I've been doing that for 20 years. This is what I do for a living. I don't have a side job. I don't have a paper route. This is my job. This is my profession. This is what I do. A Cincinnati cop who took Tensing to the hospital said he had swelling on his right arm and an abrasion on his left knee. A UC officer said the police chief wanted them to make lots of traffic stops. He had a philosophy, he called it the no-fly zone in the area, and he didn't want any drugs, guns, people with warrants in the area around our students. Earlier in the day, Rob, the prosecution, and this is very unusual, asked the judge to allow the jury to include reckless homicide along with the murder charge so so they could consider murder if they don't like murder they could go with reckless homicide reckless homicide is no intention whatsoever it's like you're acting recklessly and and you kill somebody you don't intend so it's so different from that murder that they that they said you know two years ago was absolutely necessary in this case the judge pretty much said you know what if you wanted reckless homicide you should have done that a couple of years ago and denied the motion. So that was an interesting uh, back and forth in the morning, Rob. Well, it also feels like, uh, or sounds like to me, that the prosecution's not real confident in its case. It sure does, doesn't it? You know, that's what observers are saying. Are they saying, you know, we didn't prove murder and we didn't, so please give us a chance at this so we can get something. And, and uh, reckless homicide, by the way, the penalty is one to five years. Murder, the penalty is 15 to life. So we're talking about uh, a huge difference here, uh, the way they're looking at this case now. Rob. All right, Deb, thanks very much. Ray Tenzing is expected to take the stand tomorrow.